really Sora. She's over there taking a bath. I did have a gambit in the window, but he's not there now. So any jingling you hear is Sora. She has to make her presence known. So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. Today's coffee mug is a Walmart mug, I believe. And it says, Mrs. Always Right. Now, I don't know if I'm always right. No, I'm not always right. Nobody is always right. But I did like the coffee mug. I do like the cute little lips in it. And today's tea is the Ahmed Tea. Rosehip Hibiscus and Cherry from the October Sips By box. And we're going to, oh, that's hot. We're going to go ahead and give her a taste and get started. Really hoping the cherry comes in. I want the cherry. I like cherries. I love cherries. I love cherries. Not sure. I think you get a little bit of the cherry on the back end, but it's not sweet cherry. It's not horribly sour, it's not bitter. It's more of a sour cherry. It's there. They do say it's supposed to have a splash of cherry, so I would agree that at this point in the steeping, it is a splash. You get the rose hip and the hibiscus at the front end of the taste, and then you get that sourness towards the end. It's not a horrible sourness. It's not a sourness that would make me not want to drink it. Um, but we're going to let it sit for a bit and see if the cherry part of it gets stronger. Not a bad tea, just not as strongly cherry as I hoped. But I think at this point, I think it meets what their description is. Splash of cherry. Alrighty. So today we are going to review some products uh, that I picked up uh, at the beginning of summer, I think. Towards the end of spring, beginning of summer. And then our heat and humidity hit. And because most of these, if not all of these, all of these, all of these have glycerin. I chose not to use them for a while, and then later in this, you know, mid-September, I decided to go ahead and give them a try, and so we're going to go ahead and review them. Now, for most of them, I do believe that they increased my frizz, but we were still kind of up there in the temperatures, and our humidity has just been off the charts, which is why we're kind of fuzzy today, just a little bit. Um, other than the fuzziness, I really like how this particular hair came out. But we are also going to review the um, crown paint colors that uh, you, I opened with my daughter on the channel. I did pick up some extra, some other colors. So, uh, and I have one that's used. My purple one is in my bucket for the reverse rouge. But from the original set... I believe we had the frosting, which is white, uh, fairy wand, which is kind of this tealy color, and fire, which is this red. But I also picked up some others. I picked up this cool mint to give a try. 24 karat, which is a dark gold and two others that I have yet to try, so they're still in their seals. And that is the Platinum, which is a metallic pearl. And H2O, which is an Egyptian blue. And I am going to go ahead and use these for the demo today. What there will be of the demo. I'm going to ruin my hair, but anyway. Alright, got the seals all open. 
right there. All right, let's talk about them overall. So they're very creamy. They're much creamier than the Ors wax that I tried. I haven't tried any other waxes yet, so I don't know if they're creamier than any other waxes. I am interested in trying some other waxes. I'm interested in trying the overtone, just playing around with different ways to do a temporary color in my hair. But these are much creamier than the Ors wax, but they're a bit messier to apply. And the shimmer, uh, I tried to use, when I tried to use the Cool Mint, the shimmer deposit glitter everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. I had put it in my, I was playing around with how to put it in my hair. I tried to put it in like a gel. Uh, tried to do all the raking and all those other little things to try to see how it worked for my particular hair. Uh, the problem is with my hair, since it is not a, um, it's obviously it's very curly, but it is not a kinky texture and my hair does not retain a lot of that curl if you put something in it and press it down. So I had to play around with how to apply these. And anyway, so when I put this in uh, later, I looked down and I literally had glitter all over my shoulders, all over my chest, everywhere. So there was uh, a lot of glitter. And I kept finding it in places that are already cleaned up after it dried. So when I found all that glitter, I went and washed it up. And then later I found more glitter. <laughs> so they say to seal it with a gel. I did try to do that. I didn't notice any difference in reducing the amount of glitter. When I used it on wet hair between the curl cream and the gel, I had to add more color after diffusing to get more a more vibrant color. It doesn't mess with my curl pattern as much as the wax, but it makes my hair stiff and dry and dull. So even the shinier ones seem to make my hair, um, you know, how it's kind of shiny and um, it has its own um, vibrancy, its own, you know, shine. It's, uh, that's the only way. A lot of that was uh, removed when I used these, even with the glitters. Um, the shimmers. It's also a messier application process and I'm not a fan of the way it feels or are the extra frizz or the way it dries. It feels really stiff. So I'm not as big a fan of these. Well, I gotta say it's kind of a toss up between the wax and these. The wax I can use as a gel. Uh, these didn't really work so much as a gel. Um, they both have that problem with stiffness and dryness in my hair, so I really can't count that against these crown paint colors because the wax did the same thing. It does come out in a single wash, and hair is fine once it's washed out. I have the same thing with the wax. So, in those, there's some ways that they are not uh, all that different. And as I said, I did play around with it with different ways of applying it, and different, you know, when my dry hair is dry, when my hair is wet, and different ways for that. So it doesn't doesn't work as a gel replacement. It is just too, um, this is too soft. The wax has enough hold so you can actually not use gel with the wax, uh, but this does not have any hold to it. And the color is much less vibrant than the wax and it has no real hold. So it looks like the best way for me to apply it is kind of a pinching it on. Uh, doing that seems to give me a bit more, a bit messier curl pattern because uh, I'm playing with the curl to put it in, but it doesn't straighten out my hair and the color is more vibrant that way. If I had to take, if I take my time, the frizz effect is less, but there's still more frizz than if I hadn't touched my hair at all. That's honestly to be expected if you're um, playing around with your hair. We're not supposed to play around with our hair once we're done because that's what encourages frizz. Uh, so if you're gonna be putting something in your hair when it's dry, yeah, it's gonna encourage more frizz. Would be really nice to find a color like this that I can swipe on without straightening my curls, but this is still an improvement over the wax in the sense that it's not as heavy. Um, honestly, I, I wrote that down, but I think they each have their pros and the cons are generally the same for the most part. They both straighten out my mess and mess with my curl pattern if I just try to put them in the way uh, somebody with kinkier hair would do it. Uh, they both give me um, less shine to my hair, a dryness to my hair, a stiffness to my hair that I don't like. So they both do that. The wax has the benefit of um, 
being able to be used as a gel. This has the benefit of not messing with my curl pattern nearly as much. So I think they're probably actually pretty equal in where they fall on how good they are. If you don't like a wax, then this would probably work for you. You just keep in mind you cannot use it as a gel. Uh, can't use it as a gel replacement. Now I have mixed it with gel, but again, you're looking at it being much less vibrant and needing to add more later. So you might as well just wait until you know your gel dries, your hair dries, and then adding it then because you're gonna have to do it anyway if you want the bright, vibrant color. The only other thing about this that I have to say that could that kind of tips it a little bit is that there is the shedding on the uh, glitter. Uh, the more shiny, uh, shinier versions. So when I talk about uh, pinching it on, basically I have to pick up, so we're going to try it with this silver, and I kind of want to try it with the silver because we're use, looking at using the silver for something for Dragon Con next year. I might actually go as cosplay. So I have to pick a little bit up on my fingers and they say to rub it out, smooth it out. It is very smooth and creamy. I think it's much creamier than the wax. And then instead of putting it in, I have to literally take whatever I'm going to put it on and just sort of dab it through. That silver isn't going to show up. Are you not going to show up? She's there. Just it's a silver and I've already got silver in my hair. I'm gonna take down my so I have to I cannot get big uh, chunks of it. And the silver is not really doing much for me. Excuse me, pearlescent. you can see the way I have to apply it if I don't want to lose my curl because I'm pinching and playing with my hair I'm already getting a bit more fuzz in that area and I'm not putting on a lot I'm thinking that this is we might have to look into a different hair color for what we want to do we might have to get like the overtone or something because this as you can see, it's not giving me a lot of solid color. And I will put in some other colors in a minute. But this is the only way I can put it in. Then when this stuff all dries down, this section of my hair, especially up here at the top, will be very, very stiff. And when you try to reduce that stiffness and crunch it out, you're going to get more glitter and stuff everywhere. So I've cleaned some of the glitter off, but you can see it on my fingers there. I've clean some of the color off. When this dries, some of that glitter is going to start shedding. You can see it on the inside of my thumb a little bit there. I'm not sure. You can see that glitter. That's what you end up getting on your skin as it sheds. Like I said, that's the only thing it does that really kind of irritates me the most. Um, Colors are an issue. I tried the Cool Mint. The Cool Mint doesn't really show up on my skin that, on my skin, on my hair that well. The glitter showed up on my skin just fine. Um, the dark gold, I should have realized it was really dark because it definitely uh, was much darker than I thought it would be. So we're going to try this blue that I have. It's very similar to the blue that I got in the wax. I think it's just a little bit darker. And we're going to take a spot up here. Now, this one does not have any glitter in it. There we go. You can see that. But you can see it's kind of playing a little bit with the curl, too. This is the other thing I've noticed. This one just went on a lot easier. I'm going to have to be careful with it because I'm going to end up with... Uh, I'm going to end up with dye on my face. Um... Some of them seem to be much creamier and smoother and easier to apply than others. But there's that. Just playing with different colors so you can see them. But that is the only way that I can really apply them the way I just did. Uh, when I apply them, I'll show you in just 
on another one. I don't really want to, but I'll show you on the this color fairy fairy wand. I don't know if I've played with fairy wand. I think I've played with fairy wand a little bit. And she's another one with some glitter. But if I do this, you can see my curl starts to straighten out. So for my hair, doing it like this just doesn't work for my hair. Now I can kind of bounce some of it in, but some of that curl is just already gone when I do it that way. That's actually a pretty color combination right there. I don't mind that at all. They are fun. They are very, um, like I said, they're very creamy. These uh, do wash out better, I think, than the wax. The wax actually, I think, takes more than one wash to get out, um, probably because it's a wax. Might be better if you use shampoo. Uh, most of the week I use uh, co-washes, and that probably makes a difference too. See how it straightens it out when you just sort of... But I can bounce it back, although we're still going to end up with some of that curl gone. But the thing is, I would have to be slow and patient, especially if I wanted to do more than just, say, a streak of my hair. Um, I don't think I have that kind of patience. Okay, so I have attempted to clean off that glitter. And I think you're going to see that it's still on my hands. So the glitter, the glitter part of it is kind of an issue for me. It's, it gets everywhere. You go to bed, it's in your bed, <laughs> even if you've washed your hair. That's the only thing that I think is an issue is that the, the glitter. So um, I've got it all over this hand too. I don't know if you guys can see. It's just everywhere. It gets everywhere. And when this dries down and uh, it starts to flake out, it's going to shed more glitter. I've got a little bit of glitter on my clothes. I've already got glitter on my chest. So the thing about this, uh, this particular brand, I did not notice this problem with the color wax, but I've only got the one color. Um, and I didn't notice a lot of shedding. I didn't notice a lot of um, transfer. Uh, there is some, but I didn't notice a lot. But with this one, you're going, to, if you get the glitter colors, you're going to end up with glitter everywhere. Just be prepared for that. Um, but other than that, I really think they're really fun. I do like them. These little ones are, the little packages are like, you get four of them for $12, I think, plus shipping. So they're not that expensive if you're going to, if you want to try them out. I do recommend them trying them out if you're interested in, playing around with some kind of uh, color, you know, just playing with color. But um, if you don't want that glitter everywhere, you're going to probably want to get the flat colors. I prefer the shimmery colors, which is going to unfortunately have the glitter in it. So for shimmery colors, I'd probably, for me, I'd probably go and use the wax. And for the flat colors, I would probably go ahead and use these. Uh, Again, you're looking at just a difference in how you can apply them and things of that nature. And for me, this is the only way I seem to be able to apply either one of them when my hair is dry. They're fun. They're great. I'm not saying they're horrible. I actually really like them. I just wish that for my hair, it was a little, um, a little easier for application. I wish I could just go ahead and just scrape it in the way I've seen people with kinky hair do it. And, um... I just, I can't, I can't do that. My hair, my hair will lose, well, my hair will basically go fairly flat and straight. So that's the only problem with those. So that's my review for the crown paint. I will probably end up purchasing more of these smaller ones. I prefer the smaller ones because at this point, there's no way this is going to go all through my hair. And, um, then I want to try the overtones to see if we can do all over hair color at some point. But right now for just playing around with sections of my hair, this actually really works. And now we're going to look a little weird and off balance, but that's fine. That's, that's the way that it goes. Alrighty, so the next one that I have is Cantu products. I bought three of them. 
Uh, this actually came out earlier this year and I wanted to do an early review and then I saw the starting to having problems with the glycerin and I had to put all my glycerin stuff away, especially if it was really high. The lowest amount of glitter on, uh, the lowest amount of glitter, the lowest amount of glycerin on this where they're at, in terms of where it's at is on the uh, ingredients list is five. I prefer seven or further down the ingredients list during the humid days. Um, with winter, my hair is very different this year than it was last year when I, well, even the year before, when I first started doing all this. When I first started working with my hair and trying to bring out this curl, um, I wanted to see if I had any curl. <laughs> As honestly, I've been 50 years of fuzz, so I thought wasn't sure if I had curl. Um, but when I first started doing this, my hair didn't have a problem with glycerin because it was so dry. So even though we were in the humid months when I used products with glycerin at that time, um, my hair sucked it up. It just completely just... And so that's why those products worked for me so well then because my hair was really dry, it was damaged, and it needed care, it needed trimming, it needed all those things you need to do to take care of your hair uh, when you're going natural. This year, I've noticed uh, my hair is not my hair is not dry. It's nice and soft, um, except for where I have gel cast. It is really soft. It's uh, very healthy. I have n next to no tangles when I wash, unless I use a very drying shampoo. Uh, according to what I've read, that means my hair is fairly healthy. My cuticle is closed, and um, so it's not snagging on anything. And uh, we have a lot, it could also mean that I have a hard time getting moisture in there, but I've always assumed that anyway. Uh, but the hair itself is in a different place now because it's much better taken care of. I hate when the curl goes bye-bye. And every time I touch this, I'm gonna get some on my fingers until it dries. Um, but the hair is doing much, much better. So. It's responding to certain ingredients a little differently. I still don't have a problem with dimethicone. I never did. Um, isopropyl still dries me out. And glycerin is the one that I'm getting the biggest change on because now if I use glycerin during the humidity, I start to frizz up really badly. So when I got these, long story short, too late. When I got these, I was planning to try them right away, not realizing that uh, the glycerin was an issue. I think I was finishing up a uh, curl box at the time, and I noticed my hair was having issues, and someone suggested removing the glycerin, so I removed the glycerin, and I stopped having the issue. So I put these away. And then I decided you know, later in the summer, our humidity's been up and down a lot. We've been between somewhere between 22, 23%, up to 80%, <laughs> depending on the day. I think the other day we had a 95%. So we've had some days that are been scary on the humidity. Today started off at like 53. Um, looking at it out there now, it might be lower. Uh, the clouds are gone. But um, I went ahead and decided to give them a try despite that. So let's, I got, what I picked up was, this is the Cantu Texture Line. I picked up their Strengthen and Restore Moisture Mask. The glycerin on this one is number five. I picked up their uh, Four Curls and Coils Defining Cream. The glycerin on this one is also number five. And I picked up their Defining Gel. The glycerin on this one is number three. So, when I used these, because of the high level of glycerin, I tried to make sure that anything else I used around them or anything I used with them was very low on the glycerin. It had to be seven, and I much preferred to have stuff that had no glycerin in it. This mask is very perfumey. Um, and it's not even a distinct perfume. It's almost like they tried to make it smell fresh, but it's kind of floral too. Just not a specific flower. 
yeah, it's really strong. It's very strong. Uh, the other issue with it is if you are doing pure CG, this has a sulfate in it. And like I said, the glycerin is the fifth one, and it has hydrolyzed protein. So if you're concerned about protein, you would probably not want to use this one. It has a nice and creamy consistency. Um, it's not really thick. I mean, it, it doesn't really move. I'm shaking it, and it doesn't move. But it's not... I have another one that is so thick that it's stiff. And it's really hard to get through my hair. It's one I'm not going to be buying again because of that issue. This one isn't like that. It is very creamy. It is not very loose, obviously. But it's not so thick that I cannot get it through my hair very easily. It feels very moisturizing. It's um, it's a really nice consistency, actually. Um, if it didn't have the sulfate, I'd be really, really... I'd be a lot happier with it. But anyway... It rubbed out easily in my hands and it smoothed into my hair really nicely. It rinses out well. Uh, it's not one of those that you're going to have to fight to get out of your hair. It has a decent slip and my, even my ends felt moisturized, which is really nice. And as you all know, I have sensitive ends and that's a, a thing that really works for me if it makes them. Some slight tangling when I applied my leave-in, uh, which is concerning, but I suspect that's from the sulfate at this point because this did not feel drying at all. And like I said, my hair very rarely actually tangles. So to have that tangling was just kind of odd. So some slight tangling when I applied my leave-in, but it was very slight and very easily taken care of uh, without any tugging, without feeling like I was tearing my hair out, without any, any, any issues like that. So um, my hair was, I was able to just run my fingers through stop at a tangle and kind of you know work through it without feeling like I was causing any breakage so it worked I mean I just I, you don't I don't like to have that tangling but I also find I feel I'm kind of weird that I don't have any tangling most of the time and I think like I said the tangling came from the sulfate more than anything because my hair has been fine my wet curl was a bit more flyaway than usual but likely that was the glycerin because my hair still felt really smooth when this was rinsed out would I buy this one again Probably not because of the sulfate. And I do have other masks that I like better. That said, it's a decent mask for the price. I mean, you get 14 ounces, and I think this is 10 or $11. And that is really good for a mask. Most masks I buy, I mean, the low end of the mask I buy starts around 14 So, and then they go up from there. So you'd be saving quite a bit of money, and most of the masks I get are 8 to 10 ounces, whereas this is 14. So if you're looking for something that is a deal that, you know, helps cut your cost down, this is a really good mask. Uh, if you want to avoid the sulfate, it's not a good mask. I enjoyed this mask. It's just between the sulfate and the fact that I have other masks that I enjoy more, that I think do more for my hair, uh, this would probably not be a repurchase. All right, so next is the defining cream. And I have to say that this was the one that I had the least amount of success with. And so I'm unlikely to keep it. I'm unlikely to repurchase it. This will probably go to my neighbor. As I mentioned in the past, my daughter is like me. She has too much shit underneath her sink. I have too much shit. So this is much looser than what I expected. It is almost like a lotion rather than a curling cream. You can see it starting to slide down there. But it's not, I mean, so it's like a lotion, but it's not, I mean, it even kind of almost smooths out like a lotion. It feels very moisturizing. It feels kind of slick, a little bit on the slick side. So it's, it's not quite a lotion. It's got a few things about it that don't feel like a lotion. <laughs> but to me, it's more like a lotion than it is a curling cream. It's very strange. It's a very strange consistency. Uh, the scent is lighter than the mask, but it's still a little on the strong side. The glycerin is the fifth ingredient. It applied and melted into my hair easily, and the curls bounced when scrunched in. It feels lighter than most other curl creams I've tried but it's not as product versatile, meaning um, it works with its gel. And pretty much that's about it. Unless it's a stiffer gel, I get more frizz with 
And with any gel, the curl is more relaxed and less defined. Uh, a lot of people want elongated curls. Um, they want them defined, but they want them elongated. So to me, that's more relaxed. Um, I want more of my curl. I want my curl emphasized. I've spent so many years with nothing but fuzzy, frizzy hair where you could tell it was supposed to be curly, but there was no real curl that now that it's curling, I want to show the curl off. So this doesn't work for me in terms of um, getting the kind of curl that I like. If you're looking for something really light, honestly, if you have like waves or something and you just want to get a little something in there to bring to help your waves a little bit uh, this would be good for that but beyond that I don't it just doesn't really have any hold on its own and most curl creams have a little I mean the ones that I use anyway seem to have a little bit of hold to them and then you apply the gel and then the gel seems to um, Increase that hold and make sure that hold stays in place. This, this this got nothing. I will say that between using these two, I did discover that my hair has a bit more bounce and a bit more um, curl when I use lighter weight products. So that was interesting to discover that this is too light for me. So yeah, this is going to go to my neighbor. I'm not going to rebuy it. Um, Again, it's about 10 or $11, and it's 16 ounces, so it's a good deal if you're looking for something that's really lightweight and you're planning on um, relying on your gel to get you know, a little bit more in there, or if you're just trying to give your hair a little bit of extra moisture and you don't have a high curl pattern you want to emphasize, or if you're looking for more elongated curls, this would work for you. But for me, this just, just didn't do what I wanted, what I would want a defining cream to do. So the last one was actually the most successful for me out of the three, and that's the defining gel. Glycerin is the third ingredient. This looks and feels almost like a mix of standard clear thick gels and a cream. Um, it is kind of a... Uh, not quite, but almost a milky gel. It's very much on the loose side. When you rub it out, this is going to sound very weird, but when you rub it out, I don't know if I can get you to see this very well, but it looks almost like the consistency or texture of applesauce. And I know that sounds strange, but that's exactly what it reminded me of was applesauce. There's no stickiness when applying it. The wet curl looks pretty good. This is a very versatile gel. I have found that I can mix this with other curl creams. I can mix it with other gels. They're yelling at each other. One guy's down on the sidewalk and the other guys like upstairs and they're yelling at each other. So I'm going to continue, but if you hear shouting in the background, that's what's going out. Anyway, so like I was saying, this is uh, very versatile. I can mix it with other uh, curl creams. I can mix it with other gels. And what it will do is it will lighten them up. And yes, I will get more frizz with this. Because of where the glycerin is at, I do get a lot more frizz with this. But that being said, it's a very versatile product and I've ended up really, really liking it. So I've been using it a lot since I started using it. Anyway, to go through the process of how I've used these, I first used a set diffuse. This is after putting it, because these are mostly, these two are my styling products and then of course the mask. And the first day that I used them, I did use all three, but then I also used uh, my, I think it was my Talia Wajid and, um, I did use something else. I used my Coconut Shea um, Elixir from Eden Body Works. That's what I used. So what I did is a set diffuse, and when my hair, uh, basically what a set diffuse is, I do very quick diffusing just to help to get the curl to set, to get the gel to set, and then I let it air dry. This is like a maybe a 10 or 15 minute process total. And then I let my hair finish air drying. First thing I noticed was that my hair started to frizz pretty quickly and the humidity at that time was fairly low. So these might be best for 
uh, might not be best for wash and goes for me. Second thing I noticed was that the cream and gel held a decent curl despite being on the lighter, looser, creamier side. The hold is soft with a very slight, barely there cast. I also noticed that my hair, at least in front, dried faster. I'm going to say, after not using the curl cream for a while, that most of that was the gel. The curl cream, I don't think, really added much to my hair. I, I don't think it did anything much at all. So even though I'm saying the combo did that with my hair, uh, later testing out kind of showed that that was mostly this gel. The second time, I didn't use the mask, but I dried the same way. And it made sure, again, that everything I used around it was low to no glycerin. I still got frizz, but the curl was kind of mind-blowing at that point without the mask. I have found that when I use masks, they tend to soften my curl up quite a bit that first day. And then it picks back up until the next time I mask. So that is not unusual for me with the mask. I've also mixed this with the All About Curls Hold Gel and the Talia Wajid Green Apple and Aloe to Hold Me Down Gel. The All About Curls and Talia Wajid are both no glycerin. Adding a little bit of this lightens up the texture, makes the Talia Wajid, as I think I've mentioned before, the Talia Wajid tends to be kind of on the sticky side. Uh, this reduces some of that. This helps lighten those up, so I still get some really decent curl. Um, and a lot less frizz. So those two products reduce the frizz. This lightens them up so my hair isn't being weighed down. And I've mixed it with the Apple Curl Definer. I don't think it was the best mix, but again, lightened up the cream and I got a gray low frizz hair. So out of the three, this is the one that I really like. Overall, I would say that the texture line is okay. This isn't bad, but if you're uh, if you're doing CG method, you're not going to use it because of the sulfate. This is going to be good only for people with really fine hair, hair that has more of a wave than a curl. Um, I honestly don't think this really is going to help too many people unless they really want an elongated, not very well held curl. It's just really light. Just doesn't have anything. Any oomph to it, I guess, would be the way to put it. My other curl definers actually seem to define my curl and also emphasize it. This does not do either one of those for me. But this gel is really, really nice because, like I said, I can mix it in with things. I can lighten things up. Uh, by itself, I do tend to have more frizz. But um, when I mix it with other things, I end up with less frizz. And I think the texture... Because it lightens them up, I think I get a bit more bounce, I get more volume, I get more curl. Just get more, just get more of everything except frizz because whatever I mix it in with tends to reduce the amount of frizz. So out of them all, this is the one that I like the most. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling now. That's it for the day and I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do like what you've seen, I hope you will subscribe. If you, if you do subscribe, please hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I currently upload three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but I do have bonus videos that go up almost every month, including stuff for my son and indie brands and, you know, stuff. So if you wanna see those, you do need to have that notification bell active so that you can know when those go up. If you're part of my notification squad, you'll want to check both your bell and your subscription to make sure that they are still active. If you choose not to subscribe, well, I would understand. I'm kind of a rambly old lady. Hopefully I'm a fun rambly old lady, but I would understand. And you're always welcome back here because we love having the company. And if you do come back again, don't forget to bring your cup of tea. Alrighty, so she has sat for a good 30 minutes. If we don't have an, it's still warm. <laughs> it's still really warm. If we do not have a good splash, big splash of cherry, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to be disappointed. I'm not saying that the cherry that I got earlier was bad. Just would like a bigger splash. Let's give her a sip and then we'll get on our way. Yes and no. I would say that the strength of this of the cherry, that back end cherry flavor taste, um, I would say it's about the same, maybe just a little bit stronger. But the thing that helps it is that you get it earlier. 
and it's definitely a sour cherry. And the three, the rose hip, hibiscus, and cherry do meld very well together. It's actually a really nice tea. Okay, yeah, I think I can get into that. Don't think it'll be a favorite, but I think I could get into that. Alrighty, that's it for the day. Hope you have a great one.